Good morning, everyone. The 2024 golf season is finally over. And as you can see, we've got a frosty morning with temps today. This is about the last warm day. Temps today reaching 54 degrees. So this frost should be off momentarily here. Uh, maybe another hour or so. The sun is really beating down. Uh, it's going to be a beautiful day, but it's a Monday and we are closed on Mondays. And with that, it is actually supposed to rain at about 3 or 4 o'clock today, uh, much to the chagrin of myself, because we have been without rain now for a little while. And we could definitely use the rain, especially going into the uh, fall and, well, we're in late fall right now, and early winter season. So, we're going to take a drive around the course once the frost has cleared. I have some stuff to do out on the course today. I have to take the intake pipes, which I undid a while ago. I have to take those out of the water where the irrigation shed is and put those inside another shed. And uh, take a drive around, see if there's anything I need to do out on the course. And prepare it for winter. Uh, I did my final spray of Enclave and, uh, and Wedding Agent here a while ago. And, uh, well, about a week ago, I should say. So that is all done. All that's left to do is just the basics around the golf course, and then we're shutting it down for the winter. But I do want to give a quick little recap here uh, about the 2024 season and what I experienced as a golf course owner. The 2024 season was full of challenges and full of triumph for me at least, but uh, it, it was a good year financially here. I guess it was about the same as 2023, um, essentially because of the fact that, well, we got off to a hot start because we basically didn't have a winter to speak of. I was able to open for golf without any closure uh, on March 1st. So people could come out and golf March 1st and golf whenever, which was great. It, it was awesome. It, it meant a lot more revenue for me early on, but we ran into a real big issue here uh, in end of May, well, middle of May, really, and all the way to June, through June, even into July a little bit, because we were inundated with so much rain, and you could see here with the grass, you know, how my Kentucky bluegrass was essentially decimated here because of the the water, the standing water. And you can see uh, this fairway, how it was decimated. So out of the ash, or I should say swamp, grew uh, poa annua. So I've got an inundation of poa annua here. I may overseed, I probably will overseed at some point um, because I've got just so much poa annua where standing water was going on basically all of, of May and June and there was nothing that I could do. We've, we've essentially renovated this pond so we've allowed it to actually vent out now or flow out without flowing onto the fairway because this is a low spot. And uh, that'll help number two as well. Um, essentially this year was, was frustrating for me because I had to work a month and a half longer for less pay than or less total revenue on the golf course than what I made in the previous year. Now granted the previous year was awesome, but you don't like to work more. I'm not, I am, I'm, I'm complaining a little bit because I'm working more and, and granted it's, it's the self business aspect of it, but you're working more. Here's another example of wet areas, but you're working more for less money. So now, you know, the hours I put into this place I'm making like $7 an hour or whatever. So I'm working more for uh, less pay, and that's that's been the extent of this year, even going into 2023 a little bit, when I was able to work on the golf course so much because there was no snow. It's basically felt like two years without a break for me because of the fact that last winter I didn't get a break. I was digging up irrigation on February 14th on Valentine's Day before I took my girlfriend out for a date, actually. So... I mean, if you're able to dig up irrigation without any frost issues, 
on Valentine's Day, I don't consider that a break. Yes, you do get a break from your day-to-day -day mowing activities, but you don't get a break from clearing brush. You don't get a break from cutting down trees. You don't get a break from irrigation. Uh, there was really no break to, to speak of, honestly. So uh, I'm hoping we get a little bit of snow this year, at least enough to snowmobile on. That's going to help out a ton. You know, last year we, we set record numbers. We set record numbers in revenue and profit, everything like that, which is what you want as a business. This year, not quite record numbers. Um, we were a little shy of last year, and that has to mainly do with the rain days that we had in May and June. Um, when you lose out on league nights, those $1,500 league nights add up in a hurry. And if you lose out on six to eight of those, along with some key weekend days, you know, where you're supposed to make four to five thousand dollars you know you can end up twenty thirty thousand dollars less in, a, in an absolute hurry um, because of the fact that you know you're just having so much rain days and uh, you know while rain is really good it's it's good in timely fashion and, and I can run irrigation as much as I want as seen in the summer of 2023 and this course is just fine you know the, the outside boundaries are dry but the actual golf course itself is okay. Um, and, you know, while that is more stressful in the moment, it's, it's less stressful down the line because you're not having to worry with monetary. You're not having to worry about monetary issues uh, when you get into this section of the year, November, December, January, February, March, stuff like that, where you're not making basically any money and you're losing money as a golf course operator. So essentially you, you let the good times roll and years like this where you work your ass off for very little money, you know, you try to do what you can with with the money that you have and and the side gigs that you can do in order just you know to make a living basically so um that that's kind of been this year i mean it's it's been a real mental challenge this year not as much as in the past because i've got staffing issues figured out and i've got the inside bar issues figured out but just the mental aspect of you know having to come to work when you're making less money but you're doing a better job because this course did win this nine hole course won nine hole course of the year in wisconsin i mean this is it this is the best nine hole golf course in wisconsin and and i'm out to prove to people why that is i mean there's still more accolades to come for Pinecrest yet but you know you work so hard on that and the wards are nice and the recognition is nice but you know if you don't see that money in the bottom line then it gets to be frustrating you know especially when you're trying to do everything you can on the golf course in order to make it better especially budgetary wise and yes there's slight improvements that need to be made but uh, it, at the end of the day, you know, you have to do what's best for the course. As a steward of the golf course, you have to do what's best for yourself in order to, you know, continue to be the steward of the golf course. So that's the kind of issue that I ran into this year for sure. Um, just, you know, planning into 2025 what I'm going to do and how I'm going to put some of my goals and projects and whatnot. Overall, it, it was a good year. Like I said, the rain hurt a lot. I learned a lot, you know, this year about more, more so about the golf course and what I need to do next year in order to make it better. Um, as much as I do want to spray everything on the golf course, I'm just not sure I can afford that yet. And I don't know if I have the time to do it either. That, that would require a huge commitment time and money to fertilize and spray the whole golf course because there's just so many areas that are you know, dry but I may do it anyway I may spray and fertilize the whole golf course I'm not sure yet but that's kind of one of my goals going into next year is to, to make that better but really at the end of the day uh, being a golf course owner is not that it's cracked up to be, especially when you have a full barn restaurant and you have to 
deal with that all the time. If it wasn't for my family, there'd be no way I'd be able to manage this operation. And, and granted, this is not a large course by any means. Um, it's just a small public nine hole golf course in Wisconsin. So I'm not seeing, you know, 30,000 rounds a year. I'm seeing probably 15,000 rounds a year, you know, somewhere in that 12 to 15,000 rounds a year number. So it's not a ton, ton which is also why I'm able to keep this course in pristine, perfect condition all the time is because I'm not having to deal with golfers constantly uh, when I'm spraying or when I am mowing or stuff like that. But uh, with that being said, I'm not trying to bore people with, uh, with more and more topics here, but that's about it for the 2024 season recap. If I'm missing anything, I'm going to make an addendum to the video eventually here. And uh, we'll go from there. But guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate all these uh, comments on the golf course videos here. Uh, ask any questions, any comments, please, please let me know. And uh, we'll see you in 2025. Amazing.